in praise of God's creative prowess. In the dystopian novel, The Giver, an autocratic regime seeks to control people's experience of the world. One of the ways they do this is through a drug that dulls the eye's ability to see color. They live in a drab gray world, but at a few key moments in the book, color breaks through. A flash of red hair, a shiny red apple. Suddenly, a whole new world seems possible. This vibrant flash of red in the giver is one way to understand what's happening in the weird, crazy book of Revelation. God gives a gift to John of Patmos, images, insights, and scenarios that reveal a world we could never imagine on our own. It's not a prediction of the future, but a glimpse of the way things should be and a critique of how our world has gone off the rails. In the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, God is wild, powerful, and precious. Only the most powerful and precious things humans can imagine will work as energies, fire, lightning, thunder, emerald. At the same time, what emerges from that power is a profound tranquility and peace. The sea, a source of chaos and turmoil in the human world, surrounds God like an infinity pool. John first portrays God's throne surrounded by thrones of 24 elders. This seems like a hierarchical arrangement with power flowing from God to select men. But as we move into the second paragraph of the reading, John jolts the reader by introducing four living creatures. John tells us that the four creatures are in the center and around the throne, covered with eyes and with six wings each. They look like a lion, calf, eagle, and a human. They are the first to worship. They lead the humans in recognizing God's sovereignty. The elders follow their lead and praise God for divine power and creative prowess. What does this glimpse mean? What do the images convey? First, we might notice that the creatures represent all of breathing creation, wild and domesticated, walking and flying, human and non-human. These creatures lead the elders in praising God. They are the vanguards. John's vision suggests that God's preferred reality does not start with humans at the center. Rather, they are one component of creation with no overly special place. Second, the creatures and the elders praise God for creation. In John's world, in which Rome claimed control of the universe and its leaders aped the divine calling God creator, becomes a subversive counter-ideology. This is no less true today when modern empires and transnational corporations and our complicity in their work trample God's gift of creation. The root cause of our ecological problem is a failure to put God at the center. Our destruction of the planet boils down to idolatry. While John's apocalypse seems bizarre and hard to understand, at its heart, it is quite simple. Who is in control, God or humans? Whom do we worship, God or ourselves? These questions are as old as the Garden of Eden, yet as fresh as the unprecedented snows in Athens. For more stories, please visit our website, www.pamphlestoinspire.com.